we nicely move on from the digestive tract to allergies. And I would say that there is definitely a link between the two. So if somebody has poor digestion in the context of high allergy prone state, well, it would be very important to treat the digestive system alongside the immune system. And this is a good time to point out that you can use the digestive tea and the hay fever tea together at the same time, three teaspoons of each in the teapot per day. Looking at allergies, it's imbalance and dysfunction in the immune system, particularly affecting the mucous membranes, whether they line the eyes, the mucous membranes of the nose and throat, or down into the lungs, which would commonly express themselves as hay fever and asthma. Another common manifestation is skin eruptions with an expression in eczema. Clearly, the bloodstream is involved in eliminating the products of the immune upheaval. Also, there has to be a medium between the immune system and the skin and the circulatory system. This would involve the lymph system and the circulatory system. The eliminatory organs are very important because this immune chaos in the immune cells also create breakdown products in the same way that infection does, and these need to be eliminated by the eliminatory organs. So the actions we might find helpful are a trophor restorative to the mucous membranes. Nervines, undoubtedly general stress, is related to increase of this kind of uh, tendency in the immune system. This is most obvious in terms of eczema. A direct anti-allergy effect in terms of stabilizing the cells that are prone to disruption would be a direct anti-allergy effect. These would be the mast cells which release chemicals such as bradykinin and histamine. But don't worry about those. That's just to let you know that there's also a cell level at which we want the herbs to work. We'd like an antispasmodic effect because the effect of the allergies is to make the tissues more irritable. You could say that sneezing is a very direct example of inducing spasm, and hiccups would in fact be another one. They are spasmodic conditions of the tissues. But in general, an antispasmodic effect would be helpful. Digestive effect, as we know, improving the digestive tract, improving the tone in the digestive tissue muscles, improving the function, and improving the barrier, which is a sealed barrier between the external world, which is what we ingest and have inside the gut tube, and what lies on the other side of the gut tube, which is the internal organs of the body. As I'm speaking this, I'm making gestures with my hands to indicate the tube and the dissemination, which I wish you can see. Maybe I'll make a little video of it. But the seal and the integrity of the lining of the digestive tract, we would see in herbal terms as being very important. Alterative effect is important because all of the breakdown products pile into the circulatory system which they then have to be delivered and promotion of the eliminatory functions of the eliminatory organs would be a priority. This old-fashioned term of blood cleansing would be important for a breakdown in allergic systems in the body. It's my clinical experience that adrenal stress, the living in the field with the bull, the high pace at which we live our lives, the complications, the multiple levels at which we function, often within one hour, has an effect of enhancing or leaving us prone to a low level of allergic predisposition. This can then add into a genetic predisposition. So you have this multifactorial base from which one then expresses allergic tendencies as the body's way of drawing attention to the distress of the tissues. Okay, so you'll get top marks for thinking that chamomile is likely to be helpful here. We know that it has a direct antimicrobial effect. It has a direct anti-allergy effect. It is helpful for the gut brain interaction. It is directly helpful for all digestive processes 
and really a wonderful herb for that overlap between the digestive integrity and allergic expression. Nettles we haven't come across before, they have an immune modulating effect. And what that means is that it helps normalize the system within all of the chemistry involved in allergic reactions. Some of these mechanisms need to be tuned up, some of them need to be tuned down, and nettle leaf helps us to have an effective immune system to deal with the problems that are presented to us. It also has a diuretic effect, and in that way it helps eliminate the breakdown products of this overactive immune system. Plantain or ribwort, as I've indicated before, is one of my all-time favourite herbs. It helps cool the system, it has a demulsant effect, it has an anti-inflammatory effect, it seems to have a direct anti-allergy effect, and it's trophorestorative to mucous membranes, particularly favouring the lining of the nose, the throat, and the upper respiratory tract. Particularly good for hay fever and asthma, but because of this cooling demulsant effect and anti-allergy and anti-inflammatory effect, also effective for things like eczema. Elderflower has that lovely relaxing effect on the muscles. It has a restorative effect on the mucous membranes. It has an anti-allergy effect and it has the antiviral effect, which isn't particularly relevant here, but it's just part of the multifunctionality, which is so nice about using the herbal remedies. This is the tincture bottle of allergy support tonic blend. Again, we have some of the same herbs, the chamomile, elderflower, and we've got eyebright in this, which has the anti-allergy effect and mucous membrane nourishment. We also have grindelia and ground ivy. These are two new herbs to you. Grindelia is a traditional northern European herb used as an antispasmodic and expectorant. It lowers the blood pressure if it's high because of the antispasmodic effect. It has a gentle sedative effect, a diuretic effect, and it reduces the heart rate when needed. The ground ivy is anti catarrhal expectorant, astringent, diuretic, promotes urine flow, anti-inflammatory, and it's also very rich in vitamin C, so it would also have been used traditionally for scurvy. Nettle leaf is the anti-allergy effect. Plantain and peppermint to have the demulsant, carminative, soothing, promoting sweating between the two of them. The allergy support tonic blend can be useful for when the pollen count is very high for short term use. It can be used more long term, but it works out more expensive for people. In general, it's good to use the allergy support tea or tonic before the onset of hay fever symptoms in particular. My usual regime that I suggest to people is to use the hay fever tea for one month before their allergy season starts. Commonly in Northern Europe, the allergy season is from May or June to the middle to end of August, possibly the middle of September. So you start using the hay fever tea a month before that, and that reduces the need to use the allergy support tonic blend. For when the hay fever or allergy symptoms are more than can be managed with the hay fever tea, then you add in the allergy support tonic for these additional actions and to boost the dose so that they are more likely in the low to middle therapeutic range rather than the background therapeutic range, which would be in the herb teas. They're the kind of general concepts between using the teas and the tinctures. The teas are that background, nourishing, preventive, mild symptom effect, which is then boosted with the tinctures, which are useful for when the symptoms are particularly bad or when you're anticipating a flare-up and when you want added relief for symptoms. The allergy blends of both tea and tincture can be used very effectively for chronic eczema or for eczema that flares up with stress or some other environmental exposure. It's used in the same way and in addition I would use emollient creams. We make some very nice ones but the important thing is that there is moisturising, moisturising, moisturising would also be very important. Also encouraging people not to scratch 
scratching prolongs the eczema inflammatory cycle. So the scratching itself creates and prolongs the inflammation. So any kind of padding, wearing gloves, wearing socks at night, making sure nails are cut short, all of those things are very important in reducing the scratching. Even by 10% would make a big difference to the cycle. The allergy blends are useful for all allergic conditions. Generally mild to moderate symptom range. Refer for a medical herbalist opinion and help if it's very moderate to severe. And always use the herbs in conjunction with your medical advisor. The herbs are not advised instead of medication, particularly for asthma, where people can underestimate the difficulty that they are in. And it's very important to seek professional advice, as I say, especially if one is in the moderate to severe um, category. This is a different picture of the plantain, just to show you the different ways or places that you might see it. This is growing in rough grass. And again, that very insignificant flower and flower stalk, some with petals and some without petals, and that grassy looking leaf, which makes it hard to pick it out from the background. Again, a fabulous herb for allergies and for the digestive system. So it's just to remind you and to see it in a different context. Pick the leaves, not the flower stalks, pick the leaves, scrunch them up, rip them and tear them and scrunch them up, put them in your teapot and pour on the boiling water. 